But here I am with empty space behind me and I can relax. It's a beautiful thing. I don't sit in chairs unless the chair is to the back. I can't sit in a room, a restaurant with my back to people because no matter how good you are, somebody wants you dead and there's people walking past you all the time. A hundred people walk past you and one of them decides to stab you. Are you really gonna detect it? Probably no. I had a problem with this guy. We were texting back and forth and he stopped replying to me. He never sent me a threat, which is quite interesting. And then about four days later, I was walking to my car in a car park late at night. Typical English weather. It was a little bit wet, dark, and I heard footsteps coming fast. And as I turned to see what the footsteps was, he attempted to stab me. And that's why anyone knows me well knows that my finger basically came off where I put the hand, took the knife instead of my neck. It's kind of like people often say to me, Andrew, you know, you have all this money. What's the most expensive thing you've got? The true most expensive things in the world are one, peace of mind, and two, time. Peace of mind is also something else that's very expensive and it's worth so much money. I will pay unlimited money for private security. I'll pay unlimited money to make sure I have the table in the corner with my back to the wall. I will pay anything it takes to have peace of mind. I'll tell you something, when I'm in London and I'm getting a haircut, I hire out the entire barbershop. I can't sit in that chair knowing the door's unlocked with a towel over my face, knowing that someone can walk in that shop and stab me or that one of the other people there want me dead. I can't do it. I buy the shop for an hour, close, lock the door, close the shutters, cut my hair, and, and I leave. And I have two guards outside because peace of mind is invaluable. The fact that I am not in control is an issue of a lack of tawakkul. So we all have this some one way or another, but there are ways of dealing with this. So to, a message to brother Andrew. Yes, you went through this trauma where someone tried to, you know, uh, take your life. And after that, you know, you don't like sitting in places where you can't see behind you. Uh, you know, you've even mentioned another video where you would have close friends that you trust that can keep an eye behind you. You sit um, near walls, you know, there's <coughs> your back is against the wall. You, uh, you have security, you hire out the whole barbershop, etc. Somebody, all understandable. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that you should tie your camel. There was a man who was going to the mosque in his time and he left his camel untied. And the Prophet said to him, why did you not tie your camel? He said, I trust, I put my trust in Allah, which is a, I wouldn't say another extreme, but the Prophet told us, look, you tie the camel and then you put your trust in Allah. If someone intends to harm me, they would harm me even if they're in, in the other side of the planet. And if somebody, if Allah willed that this person cannot harm me, even if he's on an inch distance away from me, he will not be able to harm me. This is our belief, uh, my dear brother Andrew. And what's really important here is also that if we look into the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wherever you may be, death will overcome you. Even if you are in fortified towers, when something good befalls them, they say this is from Allah. But when something evil befalls them, they say this is from you. Say, O Prophet, both of them destined by Allah. So what is the matter with you? Okay. And another ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is enjoined on what? On whoever has faith in Allah and the last day. And whoever fears Allah, who is mindful of Allah, he, Allah, will give him a way out from places he would never have fought.